Hello and welcome to my second video on online Zoom choirs. This short video is to address some of the questions that I've received via email about my first video. I've been completely bowled over by the amount of people that have watched the video, so thank you so much to all of you that have watched it from all corners of the world. And I've received a number of emails, lots of you asking exactly the same questions. So I thought I'd create this short video to try to help answer those questions. Also, this week, since I created the video, I have had three rehearsals online with various choirs, so I can give you some feedback on that. Going forward, I hope to create a much longer video next week, um, showing you my whole Zoom process from inviting members, preparing, uh, the cameras and everything ready for the rehearsal and the microphones to how I actually organize the rehearsal on Zoom, how I use features like host muting, the grid view and explaining to the choir members as they join, how to organize the technology so they get the best experience. I'll also be going through things like breakout rooms, the use of rehearsal tracks, the use of backing tracks, the chat feature in Zoom and how I use private um, uh, addresses to invite members in. So hopefully I'll be doing that next week. I have a number of rehearsals booked for next week on Zoom and I'm gonna use one of them as for the footage to uh, be able to make the video to explain my process. So look out for that on my channel. Back to today's video. The main question that I've been getting asked is whether you can organize a Zoom choir and have the members singing so they can each hear each other in their own home. So for example, having members of your choir in their own home singing and for you to be able to hear them all singing in an ensemble and for them to hear each other. That's the main question, is that possible? I'm afraid the answer is most definitely not. Um, this is to do not with a problem in Zoom, but a problem in the internet, or well, with the internet. Um, all of these online conferencing tools use a, 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 f a feature called VoIP, which is basically voice over internet protocol. So what that means is the voice is literally being sent over the internet and it introduces this thing called latency, which I'm sure all of you have experienced if you've played with Zoom. What that means is there is a delay between the signal going from one point to another and that delay varies according to so many different factors from the type of computer that someone's using to their bandwidth to all of the other factors that I don't know about. So what that means is when you try to get your singers singing together, their voices all come at you at different times and it sounds like chaos. In fact, for the three rehearsals I had last week, one of the first things I did in the rehearsal is demonstrate this phenomenon to the choirs so they could actually hear it and experience, experience latency. So I got them all to sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star in time with me, or so they thought, and hear the results. And people were rolling about laughing because it sounds utterly chaotic. So I'm afraid to answer your question, there is no way of getting your choirs to sing together um, reliably so they can stay in time with one another. Um, you may be wondering how big broadcasting corporations like the BBC manage it when they seem to synchronise live events across the country. Well, I would imagine that they're probably doing it by hiring a satellite. Uh, and I don't think any of us have that in our choir budgets. I know I certainly don't. So I'm afraid for now, why the technology and the internet works as it does, um, that's not really an option. But I will be going through next week um, explaining how I organise my rehearsals to get the most out of the technology that we have available for us, with us today. So what I will do for the rest of this video is I'll show you um, some other things that you may like to try other than Zoom. So if I go through to my other screen, I have got Facebook running here. And what I've done is I've created a group, a private group. You'll see that this is actually, let's bring my mouse over. Here we go. This is a private group, as it says on the screen. And that means that I can basically like have a gate on it. So only people that are invited into the group or I allow into the group can see it. So I've created this for the purpose of testing because I needed to test all my equipment to make sure things were running. Um, now, with Facebook and YouTube, what I'll show you today is how you can broadcast and a, a broadcast a rehearsal so your choir can see it. So if you don't want to use Zoom, this is another alternative. Um, it's very much like broadcasting a television program. So it'll be one-way traffic. Your voice will go across the internet and whatever else other music you're playing into your microphone. And they'll be able to pick it up their end and watch it. The beauty of this is it does allow them to comment as well. So they can comment through text along the side of the video that will appear and you will be able to see that. For those of you in the UK, Gareth Malone is currently doing something very, very similar um, 
online with with uh, an online choir. So he's uh, broadcasting once a day, and people chat in the in the in the side. I would say that you need quite a small audience. Um, if you've got an audience of say 50 choir members or 100 and 150, then you can just about get away with it because otherwise the chat can get quite complicated. So how do you do this? Well, on your group, you can even do this on your own private uh, Facebook page, or you could do it if you have a choir Facebook page. You click on live video. So where you'd usually type your status, you click on your live video and it will throw up this box. Now what's happening here is it's accessing my camera and you can see that I've got a second camera in the room so I'm going to go over here and select the camera I want to use which is my normal camera that you see me on. Down here I'm going to select where the sound is going to come from. Now there's lots of options here. You probably want to use, if you have no extra equipment, you're going to probably want to use your internal microphone, your built-in microphone. But I have a device that's connected to my computer that allows me to plug in multiple inputs. So that's what I'm going to be using today. You can also share your screen as well and you'll notice just over here, this is quite important. Clearly you can see yourself so you know that the, mic is, the uh, screen is working, the camera. Over here we have a little level which is the microphone. If I tap the microphone it's up here, you can see it reacting. Um, so that's showing me that we are getting a level in. Now I'm going to title this, I'm going to title this test three because I've probably up to about test seven by now, but there we go. And I click go live. Now assuming it's counting down and there we go. So now I'm effectively live on that Facebook group. You can see up in the top left hand side that it's counting the time. And over here on this right hand side, very soon, we're going to have the comments appearing. So I've, I'm able to then type in a comment. So I'm going to type in, hello, everyone. Now, of course, I don't really need to say that in a text because I can say it through my microphone and that will appear on the screen as well. My people that are watching it can type in as well. So they can add comments at this point. Um, if they're struggling with a phrase, they want me to run a bit. Uh, of a piece that maybe the altos are struggling with. One of the altos might comment and say that. Um, so it allows a little bit of dialogue, but um, it's mainly one-way traffic. They'll be able to hear and see me, and I won't be able to hear or see them, but I will be able to see what they type. So if I shut that down, and you go to end, now it's going to say your video has ended. I don't want to delete the video because I would like to show you what happens now. Now if we go back to the group, I'm just going to refresh it because it will then say on my group that that video was recorded. So you can see that's the video that we have just recorded. And you can even see my comment there, and there I am. If I just press play, you might just hear this. I'm not sure whether you will, let's see. But um, it's mainly one-way traffic. They'll be able to hear and see me, and I don't know whether you could hear that, I hope you could, but that was the video that we just recorded. Now, when people are watching it back, um, I'm just going to refresh it one more time. Imagine that that was an hour rehearsal and people have been commenting it, uh, all the way through it. Well, they can actually select, if they want to watch it back at a later date, they can select, instead of going to most relevant comments, they can go to real-time comments. So that will then make the comments appear in real time as the video is progressing. If I go back here, you'll then see when I'm waxing lyrical here that that comment that I typed will appear at the same time that I typed it. Um, within the context of the video. So here, here we go, it looks like it's going there. Now I'm typing, and there it has appeared. So it allows them to see 16 seconds in. And you can see I've done a couple of these test videos as I was checking things out. So where might this be useful? You could do this um, on your own Facebook page and invite your members to join and watch, and it has that interaction of the typing. Um, or you could do it on your choir page. Um, the issue with Facebook, of course, is that not all of your choir members will be on Facebook, and so there is some resilience uh, with social media among some people, so you may encounter a little bit of resistance. I personally like it because I think that it's a little bit more of a gated community. It's a little bit more secure because you have to be invited into these groups if you're doing it on a group. So it just makes it a bit more private and a bit more personal. The other option is to use YouTube. This is my YouTube channel and it works in exactly the same way. So instead of uploading a video, you go up and you go to go live and you'll notice it looks like a very similar interface that we have here. So if we just wait for this to appear, it's going to ask me for, um, where are we, the title. So I'm going to call it trial, what are we up to now? Let's call it trial five. I could make it public. 
I'm going to choose not to make it public because if I go public, it will mean it will be live on my video channel at the moment, which I don't want. If you go to private, only you will ever be able to see it, which makes it pretty pointless. Unlisted is a good option. Unlisted will allow anybody that's got the link um, to view the video. You need to have the link available to send it to them. So it's probably if you're wanting to make a video and then release it at a later date to your choir, you could do an unlisted video, broadcast it, and then send them the link at a later date. Public allows you to broadcast straight to your channel. So I'm going to use unlisted today because I don't want this live on my channel. Then it has few options. This is made for kids. I'm going to say no, age restriction, more options. Now this is the significant stuff here. Um, I'm going to say music educational. Let's put, uh, well, been an educational today. Here, what camera would I like to use? I'm going to use the same camera um, as before, which is my pro, is it done it? FaceTime camera, there we go, that's the camera. And I'm still going to use my Eddie Roll interface. Um, unfortunately here, you cannot check the settings and s to see whether you've got that uh, the feed coming in. So you'll notice with um, Facebook, you could see the levels when I tap to the microphone. You can't do it here. So what I tend to do is I'm on a Mac, I have my settings open. Um, it'll be very similar on a PC, you'll just have to go to your audio settings. And if I go to sound, I can actually see that through this input here that I am getting a level. So I know I am receiving a level from my microphone. So I know that's going out. And I tend to have that open during rehearsals anyway, because it allows me to monitor the, uh, the feed going out. So when that's all set up, I know I've got the right mi microphone. I can see myself in the background. I go to next. It's going to take a shot, so I smile. There we go. It's taken a shot, so that's introducing it. It's unlisted. Now, that would usually say public, if you've set it to public. I go to go live. It will count down. And in exactly the same format as Facebook, I am now going to be live on my channel. Now, this is where down the bottom you can now see the feed coming in. That's the audio coming in, so I can see that if I clap... I get some loud sounds there. I can end stream and just like with Facebook, the comments will start appearing here as your members type them. I believe to type comments on YouTube, you actually have to have a YouTube account. So we're still back in the problem of someone having to sign up to some type of service. If they want to be able to type, they can obviously watch without having a YouTube account. But if they wanted to type, I believe they have to have a YouTube account to do that. Um, but the comments again will appear as you can imagine. And I'll just type hello again, there you go. And over here, you can see it's type, telling me I'm live. It will tell you how many people are watching, and it will tell you the time. So if I just end the stream there, and when that stream, I will, for now, I'm going to go to dismiss. You can edit it in the studio. That allows you to chop the start of it and stuff like that, edit it a little bit. So I'm just going to dismiss it for now, and it will take me through to this screen. So let's have a look. Right, so there it is. Um, there's the video. I can view the video on YouTube. And remember that this was unlisted, so at the moment, no one's going to be able to have watched this. But if I go and click on the video, Facebook, I am now going to be live on my channel. Now, this is where down the bottom you can. So that's me live, and there is the link. So I can then share that link if I wanted to pre-record this. In fact, I'll probably share it from here. Um, play from the start. I would share that with my choir. Of course, if you're wanting to do this actually live, you can only get the link out to your choir after the event if you're doing a private link. Or, um, a private listing. So the way you would have to do it is do it public so that way it would just appear on your channel and then you just tell your choir via email that you're going to go live at this point. So they'll then go to your channel wherever that may be and join the uh, video at that point. Right, so I hope that's answered some of your questions. As I say, watch out for next week's video because I think that's going to give you a lot more detail about how I certainly run my rehearsals and the various things that I've encountered this week with the three rehearsals that I've done so far. So if you do have any questions, do feel free to email me. I'll put my email at the end of the video. Um, I'll try to answer as best I can. Um, and if you are able to, please subscribe to this channel. That'll help me immensely. Stay safe and take care. Thank you.